Hi there. In this video, we are going to discuss about stage 2 that is plan deployment. Plan deployment to migrate to Power BI. This is the stage 2. The focus of stage 2 is on defining how the requirements that were defined in stage 1 are used to migrate solution to Power BI. So over here, you can see on your screen that we are right now on stage 2. Stage 2 and stage 3 can be done in parallel and after that we have to create and validate that means we have to move to stage 4. Now let's see what are all the steps that you need to consider in the stage 2. In stage 2 first we have to choose a Power BI product. Secondly we have to decide on workspace management approach. Thirdly we have to determine how content will be consumed. After that, we will decide if the other content may be created. Once it's done, in the step number 5, we have to evaluate needs for premium capacity, whether we do really need it or not. In step 6, we have to determine the data acquisition methods. In step 7, we will decide where original content will be stored. And lastly, we have to see how much efforts do we really need, what kind of resources we are going to need in this. So let's get started. The very first stage would be choose Power BI product. In this one, we have to choose whether we should go with the Power BI service or Power BI report server. Power BI service is a cloud based service. However, Power BI report server is an on premise solution from Microsoft Power BI team. Some of the companies or the organization around the world are still not comfortable regarding the security issues over the cloud. That's why they need something on-premise. And in that case, you can use the Power BI report server. Now let's jump on to the step two, where we have to decide on workspace management approach. Workspaces are a core concept of the Power BI service, which makes workspace management an important aspect of planning. Here you should ask some of the questions from yourself. That means, is a new workspace needed for this new solution? Secondly, you should ask yourself, will separate workspaces would be needed to accommodate deployment, test and production? If you will ask me, I'll always suggest that you should have three different workspaces for three different environments. That means for your development, testing and production, you should have three different workspaces. So over here, you should know first what is a workspace. It's simply a container where you can keep your reports, data sets, data flows or anything regarding Power BI content that you create and manage. Next to this, you should ask yourself, will separate workspaces be used for data and reports or will a single workspace would be sufficient? Separate workspaces have numerous advantages over here, especially for securing data sets. When necessary, they can be managed separately from those users who publish reports. Now, the next question comes, what are the security requirements for the workspaces? On the workspaces, we have different roles. If you don't know about that, please drop your comment in the comment section. Then I'm going to create a separate video on workspace roles. Next, you should also think about, can existing groups be used for securing the new content? Both Azure Active Directory and Microsoft 365 groups are supported in Microsoft Power BI. When aligned with the existing processes, using groups makes permissions management easier than assignment to individual roles. So whenever you are going to put a lot of users inside one AD group, it's easy to manage and specifically in case of security when we have to create different roles. Lastly, you should also ask yourself, are there any security considerations related to external guest users? You may need to work with your Azure Active Directory administrator and your Power BI administrator to configure guest user success. In the step third, we have to determine how the content will be consumed. It is helpful to understand how consumers of a solution prefer to view reports and dashboards. That means how the end users are going to view or interact with the reports. Next, we are going to decide if other content may be created. There are several key decisions to be made related to allowing consumers to create new content, such as will consumers be allowed to create new reports from the published dataset? Are you going to allow them to build 
the content on your existing data sets this capability can be enabled by assigning data set build permission to a user secondly if consumer want to customize the report can they save a copy of it and personalize it to meet their needs over here you should be careful about one thing although the save a copy capability is a nice feature it should be used with caution when the report includes certain graphics or header or footer messages since logos icons and textual messages often relate to branding requirements or regulatory compliance it is important to carefully control how they are delivered and distributed next we have to evaluate need for a premium capacity need for a premium capacity depends on certain factors whether you want to go for the advanced data analytics or you may want to connect to your other external tools such as ssms etc or maybe you need a lot of storage space into your power bi service so these are a couple of the factors which you can also see on your screen and based on that you can decide whether you should go for power bi premium per user or power bi capacity based premium licenses over here you should note that with the premium capacity you get a lot of additional features plus auto scaling etc I'm going to provide you a link in the description section where you will see how you can choose the right license for your organization. So please do watch that video and that video is going to be very helpful for you. In the step 6, we have to determine data acquisition method. This is going to be another very important point. Here you have to consider can an existing Power BI shared dataset be used or is the creation of a new Power BI dataset appropriate for this solution? Many of the reports can be created on the same data set. Try to create one golden data set on the top of that you can create different reports. Secondly, does an existing shared data set need to be augmented with new data or measures to meet the additional needs? Thirdly, which data storage mode will be appropriate? We have three different kinds of data storage mode. We have import, direct query and live connection. and also we have a composite data model so you have to check which one is going to be best for you next should aggregations be used to enhance query performance when we have a huge amount of data then maybe you need to consider the aggregations or aggregated tables in your data model next will creation of a data flow be useful and can it serve as a source for numerous data sets that one also you can consider over here Nowadays Microsoft has also introduced a new feature in Power BI service that is data marts so probably you want to consider that option too Lastly when you are going to connect with your on premise or other cloud services probably you may need a data gateway where you can add your data source In step 7 we will decide where the original content will be stored Here you need to specify an approved location for storing the original Power BI desktop files and some of the cases you have to also think about the version controlling of those files so how you are going to do it some organizations around the world they have their own app they can do it otherwise what you can do you can decide to go with the one drive or maybe with the sharepoint where there is the automatic version controlling option so you can choose that next you would specify an approved location for storing non centralized source data such as flat files or excel files and lastly you also need to specify an approved location for content exported from the power bi service now coming to the last step that means step number 8 where you have to assess the level of effort once sufficient information is available from the requirement which for described in stage 1 previously in the last video if you haven't watched it please do watch that video and the solution deployment process it's now possible to assess the level of effort it is then possible to formulate a project plan with tasks timeline and responsibility here you have to also think about how many resources you are going to need how many human resources you are going to need do you have all the things that you need to carry out this migration process etc however remember that labor costs salaries and wages are usually among the highest expenses in most organizations although it can be difficult to accurately estimate productivity enhancement have an excellent return on investment so guys that's all for plan deployment to migrate to power bi that is stage 2 in the stage 3 we are going to discuss about conduct proof of concept so please stay tuned for the next video if you have any more question or concern please don't forget to let us know 
and also if you are the one who's looking forward to make their career into data and analytics using microsoft power platform or microsoft azure please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates see you in the next video